They are business leaders, experts in economy, society, and culture. In 15 minutes, their insights will create a vivid picture of Vietnam. Sharing Vietnam, the country as you see it. Hello everyone and welcome to Sharing Vietnam of NetVid Channel VTC10. I'm your host, John Chun. Conventional wisdom says that a fast-growing economy will trigger inflation. In the case of Vietnam, who has experienced significant growth in the past decade, this may or may not be true. However, coupled with the rising world prices of products and goods, and now inflation is definitely a cause for concern. It's particularly a concern for many foreign enterprises who have seen investment and earnings eroded away by inflation. Joining us today to discuss this issue is Mr. Matthias Dune, Executive Director of European Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam. Mr. Dune, it's a pleasure. Thank pleasure you for joining us today. Before we begin, here's a clip on Mr. Dune's life in Vietnam. Mr. Mafias Dun, Executive Director of European Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam, coming to Vietnam for four years and really attached to Vietnam as Executive Director of Eurocham in Vietnam, Mr. Mafias extremely likes this country. Besides working time, he's really interested in reading books and find out information about the issues of economics and society in Vietnam. Hello everyone and welcome back. So Mr. Dun, I assume as a executive director of Eurocham in Vietnam, you must be a very busy man. But uh, from the clip, we see that you find time to read. Um, well, I do read uh, a lot as part of my job, but in my mm -hmm. free time, I also uh, read uh, books to relax in the evening sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you read, do you read about your job, economics, or do you read about, do you, is there pleasure in reading as well? Well, I, I like nonfiction, mm -hmm. but more general stuff about the, the world economy and, uh, and ec economics in, in, in general. Mm -hmm. So I assume uh, you're reading a lot about the economics, uh, the economics in Vietnam, that uh, you know that there's an inflation issue currently. Well, inflation is indeed a serious issue for Vietnam, and it has always been, like as you say, in developing countries always have to balance uh, growth and inflation. That's a, a normal issue. Mm -hmm. But in Vietnam, it has reached uh, 27% in 2008, 22% wow. now in 2011. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eurocham has just recently uh, published the Business Climate Index, in which... Uh, Inflation was a major concern of our European member companies. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duna, inflation is actually our main topic for today, but um, I just want to ask you, what about uh, inflation that has caused uh, a decline in European enterprises' investment in Vietnam? Well, let me first say that, that, that investment decisions uh, are, are influenced by many factors. And it's not only inflation, but it's also infrastructure, education, the legal environment. But inflation is indeed one of the factors. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particularly, if you're worried about the uh, stability of your investment, if you mm -hmm. have to invest, you have to exchange your U.S. dollars into local currency. Mm -hmm. And if that currency is not uh, stable and mm -hmm. uh, is subject to, to inflation or depreciation, mm -hmm. then you have a concern that you cannot recover your investment later. I so see. in that sense, uh, inflation or depreci and or depreciation of the, of the, the currency is mm -hmm. indeed one of many issues that uh, European investors have when mm -hmm. investing into, into Vietnam. Okay, and uh, we're going to explore this more, but actually let's take a break. And here's a clip about the story of inflation in Vietnam. It has been shown that inflation affects investment in several ways, mostly inhibiting economic growth. The short of inflation is money in the supply of it. Investors need to be able to expect returns in order for them to make financial decisions. If people cannot trust money, then they are less likely to engage in business relationships. This results in lower investment, production and less socially positive interactions. Among other effects, 
people may start to attempt to treat by other, less efficient means in order to avoid the unpredictable price levels due to inflation. Hello everyone and welcome back. So Mr. Duna, uh, what has Vietnam uh, done to uh, combat high inflation and what's your assessment of the actions that have already been implemented? I think one of the good measure, measures that the Vietnamese government has taken was resolution 11 to tackle inflation and it looks like uh, six months uh, later it is showing effects with inflation coming down a little bit uh, in, the, in the next uh, two or three months. Mm -hmm. I see. And, and on, a, on a broader level uh, another project to be mentioned is certainly Project 30 mm -hmm. to reduce administrative burdens in Vietnam be mm -hmm. because that is obviously a concern for the European companies and that, uh, that, that project has been successfully implemented mm -hmm. and uh, has reduced uh, indeed the so burden, good results. The, the burden uh, mm -hmm. of administrations by at least 30%. So and this is something Eurocham has, um, has supported a lot with its members. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy to see the good results of Project 30. That's great. So Mr. Dune, we'll actually take a break and let's take a look at a clip on Eurocham's activities to support and promote uh, Vietnamese and European enterprises. European Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam has lots of activities to support Vietnam's trade. Many training courses to provide the capacity buildings for Vietnamese enterprises. Many consultants from Europe came to Vietnam to instruct. Many projects aim to support for European small and medium enterprises to invest in Vietnam market. Hello everyone, welcome back. So Mr. Dun, we just seen from the clip that uh, various activities that Eurocham has uh, done. Can you elaborate and uh, tell us how Eurocham has uh, helped uh, European and both European and Vietnamese enterprises? Mm -hmm. Well, on the European level, uh, Eurocham tries to promote investment between uh, Europe and uh, Vietnam, especially to bring small and medium enterprises from Europe uh, to Vietnam to, to convince them to invest. Mm -hmm. And in Vietnam, Eurocham tries to improve the business climate in Vietnam to influence the, the rules and regulations to make life easier for I the see. companies mm -hmm. that are already here. Uh, for the, on the Vietnamese side, we are involved in a lot of uh, capacity building projects for Vietnamese company, mm -hmm. uh, companies like, for example, the, the MUTRAP, the Mutual uh, tra uh, Multilateral Trade Assistance uh, Project mm -hmm. uh, for capacity building for Vietnamese business associations, in which we help the Vietnamese companies uh, be a consultation partner mm -hmm. to the government and to do better trade with Europe. I see. Thank you. So, Mr. Dun, uh, despite inflation, uh, the turnover for European enterprises in Vietnam is still very high. And so this indicates that while inflation may be a concern, it's not a deterrent for uh, European enterprises from investing altogether. Do you agree with this statement? I agree. European investors are usually committed long-term investors. They may mm -hmm. take a little longer to make their investment decision, but once they, they are there, they are committed. Mm -hmm. And as I said, that inflation is only one of the, the many factors that mm -hmm. uh, influence companies to, to come to, to Vietnam mm -hmm. and other factors as I said are uh, education, uh, tra availability of workforce, the regulatory mm -hmm. framework and things like infrastructure or the administrative uh, uh, environment. I see. And then expanding upon inflation, mm -hmm. uh, some believe that inflation only affects small and medium sized enterprises. Uh, do you, uh, what do you think of this? Well, I, I agree in the sense that it is uh, easier for multinational enterprises to protect themselves, to, mm -hmm. to, to hedge the risk or to protect themselves against uh, uh, inflation or to get credit even. Mm -hmm. So and that's, that, that's uh, more difficult for the small and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. And that's why Eurocham uh, supports especially small, small and medium enterprises and, mm -hmm. and, and two-thirds of our member base are indeed uh, small and medium enterprises. I see. So jumping into the topic of European investment, the decline currently, uh, do you find that to be a short-term issue or is that a long-term uh, concern that we need to fix? I think a short-term issue because our European investors are still very positive about Vietnam. Mm -hmm. the, the macro story is still 
intact. Uh, Vietnam has a huge uh, domestic market, a mm -hmm. young and eager workforce, mm -hmm. uh, political stability, and it's mm -hmm. uh, located uh, uh, well within ASEAN, uh, has access to uh, 500 million people. So mm -hmm. it's, a great, it, it's still uh, an interesting investment destination. Mm -hmm. But of course, it competes with other countries uh, within ASEAN, mm -hmm. but, uh, but Vietnam is doing pretty well. And if you look at the latest uh, the World Bank, Bank report, you see mm -hmm. that Viet Vietnam has, has gone, gone up even, I wow, think, 10, I 10 ranks, uh, mm -hmm. up to 78 or 79 now, mm -hmm. uh, which is, which is pretty, pretty good, which is actually uh, almost uh, close to better than Italy, which uh, wow. landed on uh, rank mm -hmm. 80. So from a European perspective, uh, mm -hmm. we are, feel still upbeat about Vietnam mm -hmm. and despite the, the short-term problems, we are convinced about Vietnam as a destination long, for long-term. Long term. Mm -hmm. yes. That's a very promising future. So Mr. Duna, you've been here for four years working, uh, two years with Eurocham and you've done a lot to help the, um, the business enterprises in Vietnam. And uh, just in general, how has Vietnam treated you in the last four years? Well, it has been a great and positive experience. Mm -hmm. It is uh, much faster, much more booming than my home country, Germany. Things uh, move very quickly and there's mm -hmm. a lot of energy and, uh, and, and dynam dynamism in the, mm -hmm. in the Vietnamese economy and society. And that's really uh, exciting and uh, I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I've enjoyed it a lot and it's a, it's a great country to, to live in. That's great. Yeah. And uh, well, actually that ends our show today. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. Du. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> And that concludes our show for today. Thank you for watching Sharing Vietnam. From all of us from NetVid, Channel VTC10, I'm John Chun. Live through today and we'll see you tomorrow. Cảm ơn ông Matthias, Dan và John Trần. Tiếp theo mời quý vị và các bạn cùng quay trở lại với biên tập viên Nguyễn Tùng để đến với câu chuyện hội nhập ngày hôm nay. Xin cảm ơn Hà Phương. Thưa quý vị và các bạn, Đồng bằng sông Cửu Long là vùng có điều kiện thuận lợi để phát triển du lịch, đặc biệt là các điều kiện tự nhiên để phát triển du lịch sinh thái. Vậy các địa phương trong vùng đã tận dụng những lợi thế này như thế nào để phát triển du lịch theo hướng bền vững? Câu trả lời sẽ có sau ít phút nữa.